everyone, this is Ami Patel. This video is about rectifiers with the filter. I had discussed the block diagram of DC power supply and the initial two blocks were the transformer and rectifier. In some previous videos, I had discussed about the rectifiers and we had derived certain parameters of all these rectifiers, half wave and full wave rectifier and we know that the output of this rectifier is the pulsating DC. That means it contains DC plus AC component and this AC component must be removed to get the pure DC. So we need to pass this rectifier output through the filter to get the pure DC or we can say uh, the filter will reduce the ripples or AC component present into the rectifier output. So let us analyze first the concept of filter. You can see the filter block is shown and the input to the filter block is rectifier output that is the pulsating DC and output of this filter will be the pure DC. The input signal is the pulsating DC that is the full wave rectifier output which contains the 48% ripples. So ripple factor for the full wave rectifier we had already derived that was the 48% and the output of this filter you can see is having less amount of ripples than that of the pulsating DC. So this is how the AC component or the AC ripples are reduced by the filter. Now we will see what are the types of filters. The first and very simple is the capacitor filter. Then we will see the inductor filter. Then the LC filter. Then pi filter that is CLC filter. Let us begin with the capacitor filter. What is filter circuit first? The filter circuit is one which removes the AC component present in the rectifier output and allows the DC component to reach to the load. Now you can see uh, the circuit diagram in which the rectifier block is shown. Input to the rectifier is the alternating signal, sinusoidal signal. At the output, the capacitor C and the load R is connected where the C is acting as a filter. Now you already know that the output of the rectifier contains both DC plus AC component. Now XC that is the capacitive reactance is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi FC. Now for AC signal that is for the high frequency the capacitor will provide less reactance or less resistance and for DC that is F is equal to 0 the reactance which is provided by the capacitor is very high. So the capacitor will allow the AC signal to pass through it and it will block the DC. This is how the two part of the rectifier output that is AC and DC component will pass through the two different element and across load or through the load we will get only the DC component. Now we will see the half wave rectifier with the capacitor filter. So this is a circuit diagram for half wave rectifier with the capacitor filter. Input signal to the half wave rectifier is shown that is the sinusoidal signal and the output signal with the dash line is the half wave rectified output. Now output of this uh, uh, half wave rectifier is a pulsating DC. It contains AC plus DC component and we had already seen in the previous slide the capacitor will provide low resistance or reactance path to AC component. That's why as shown in the figure the AC component of the rectifier output will pass through the capacitor and the DC component will pass through the load that is the resistance. As shown in the figure from 0 to T1 diode D is on that means it is in forward bias during the positive half cycle and the capacitor will charge 
till Vm as shown in the figure and the path will be the current is flowing secondary of the transformer, diode, then the capacitor and the capacitor will charge to the value Vm. This we have seen for time period 0 to T1. Now we will see what happens after T1. For that again we will see the same circuit and from 0 to T1 the capacitor is charging till Vm that we had already seen in the previous slide. Now if the time T is greater than T1 then what happens? The cathode of diode D is connected to the capacitor which is charged to Vm and the anode is connected to the secondary. Now this input voltage is less than Vm that means this diode is in the reverse bias that's why it will act as an open circuit as shown in the figure and due to that the capacitor will start discharging through the resistor as shown the output voltage waveform will be discharging during 0 to T1 diode D is on and after T1 diode D is off. Now when input voltage will be greater than the voltage across the capacitor again this diode D will turn on and the capacitor will start charging and this cycle will get repeat and you will find charging and discharging waveform as shown at the output. Now we will see the full wave rectifier with the capacitor filter. This is the circuit diagram for the full wave rectifier with the center tape transformer and at the output the capacitor filter is shown. The output waveform shown with the dash line is the full wave rectified output and with the dark line is the filtered output. Just analyze the filtered output. You will find some region that is from 0 to A, then B, then C and so on. So we will analyze this regions one by one. From 0 to A, we have positive half cycle of the input and due to that diode D1 is on and diode D2 is off. That's why the current will flow through the diode D1 and the capacitor will charge to Vm. Now from A to B, diode D1 and D2 both are off. Diode D2 is already in the reverse bias condition and diode D1 will be off because the capacitor voltage which is connected at the cathode of D1 is greater than the voltage at the anode of D1 because input is now reduced that's why diode D1 will also turn off and during this time this capacitor will be disconnected from the diodes and the capacitor will start discharging through the resistor and we are having the curve A to B. Now from B to C, actually it, it is the negative half cycle of the input and diode D1 is off and diode D2 is on because the voltage across the capacitor is less than the voltage at the anode of the D2. That's why diode D2 is on and the capacitor will charge through diode D2. It will charge till Vm, that is the point C. Now from C to D, again both the diode will be off now and capacitor will be disconnected from the diode and it will start discharging through the resistor. This is how we are having the filtered output as shown in the figure. So if we calculate the ripple factor for the capacitor filter for the full wave rectifier then the equation for the ripple factor is equal to 1 divided by 4 root 3 Fc into Rl. If Rl is increases then the ripple will get decreased. So the load value is very high then the ripples can be reduced for the capacitor filter. 
Now we will see the inductor filter. The circuit diagram for the inductor filter is as shown in the figure. We have the rectifier block and that is connected to the inductor and that is connected to the load. The inductive reactance that is XL is equal to 2 pi F into L. Now this inductor provide low impedance path for the DC signal that is for F is equal to 0. And it provides the very high impedance to the AC signal. So the inductor will allow DC component to pass through it and the DC component only will reach to the load. So it will block the AC. And for this inductor filter, for the full wave rectifier, if we find out the ripple factor, then the equation comes out to be, so if RL changes, then the ripple factor will get changed. So ripple factor is varying with the load. This type of filter is preferred for the small value of the load resistance. Next we will see the LC filter. The circuit diagram for the LC filter is shown in the figure. We have the rectifier and its output is connected to L in series and C is connected in parallel and to it the load resistance RL is connected in parallel. We had already seen the uh, ripple factor equation for the capacitor filter and inductor filter. In capacitor filter the ripple factor is inversely proportional to the load. And in the inductor filter, the ripple factor is directly proportional to the load. So, this inductive and the capacitive filter depends on the load. So, ripples or the ripple factors are dependent on the load. So, we are using LC filter which will make the ripple factor independent of the load. If we calculate the ripple factor for the LC filter for the full wave rectifier then the equation would be 1 divided by 6 root 2 omega square L into C. Here also the concept is same that inductor will allow only DC component to pass through it. The capacitor will allow the AC component to pass through it. So from the rectifier output only DC will pass through the inductor and if some AC component is present into that signal that will again pass through the uh, capacitor and only the pure DC that is the we can say the ripple free uh, signal will only pass through the load. Now here the bleeder resistance is kept. So if the load is very high then to maintain the constant current through the inductor we are connecting one resistor that in parallel with the load that is called the bleeder resistance. That is to maintain the constant current through the inductor. Next we will see the pi filter. The circuit diagram for the pi filter is as shown in the figure. We are having the rectifier block. Its output is given to the capacitor and that is connected to the inductor and then again capacitor. So it forms the pi structure that is CLC and that is connected to the load. And the ripple factor for full wave rectifier with this pi filter, if we calculate that, that comes out to be, this way you can analyze different filter for the ripple factor values. The ripple factor should be as small as possible and that is the best filter we can design. So with this, I am ending this session over here. Thank you.